Hi, I'm Nick, and this is a show about art. This show is all about your art and your creations. Every episode is different, but every episode will challenge you to try new things, learn new stuff, and become a better creator. Oh, and let's inspire and encourage each other through it all. Let's get into it. Hey Artistic Badasses, welcome to a show about art episode number 9. Last week I dared you to try out the 3 color artwork challenge. And guess what? You guys handed in some awesome artworks. Let's check and check them out now. Rachel Ann Hall completed the 3 color challenge 3 times which includes a doggo and a mermaid. I love the green line work she used. Tanage 102 created a wolf themed yin yang symbol with flower petals surrounding it. Awesome! Unmasked Art used colour pencils to create this beautiful grasshopper artwork. The colour blending is amazing. Billy Art created the world's friendliest and emotionally supportive Godzilla ever. Just look at him. Have you ever seen a more likeable Godzilla before? Stefan participated in the 3 colour challenge as well as the 3 fruit challenge too. Fruits become very intimate in the fruit bowl. Mouth painted a very confused line in his 3 colour challenge artwork. I wonder why he is so confused. Can anyone help him out? And from Dominic Taranto's Automatism Challenge, Vapra created this beautiful heart-shaped linework artwork for Valentine's Day. Picked at random, Vapra wins the Artistic Badass Sticker Prize. Great job guys! Remember, it doesn't matter what your artistic skill level is or what materials you use. Anyone can get featured in these episodes and anyone can win a prize. With that challenge done, we better get on to creating a new one. Let's call up our old friend, the Segment Machine. Today, we'll be drinking some coffee. But Nick, this is an art show, not a coffee show. And to you I say, coffee comes first, then art. But what if they could be done at the same time? To cut a short story even shorter, today we're using coffee and tea as if it were a watercolour paint. So what materials do we need to get this project caffeinated and ready to go? That's a good question. The first thing we'll need is coffee and tea. Any old coffee or tea brand will do. We don't need the expensive stuff. We also need a sketch to start with. I decided to go with a ram skull. Other than the coffee, I'll be using a brush pen, fine liner and paint brushes. Thick paper is also helpful too. We'll need 5 cups which are safe to use with hot water. Let's turn on the kettle. While the kettle is doing its thing, let's prepare our coffee and tea. I'm going to place a single tea bag in one glass and three tea bags in another glass. This will create two different tones. Let's do the same thing with the coffee. Put a little in one cup, a medium amount in another and a lot in the last cup. Oh dear lord, the kettle is ready. Carefully pour the hot water in. Put a lot of water in the weaker tea and coffee sizes and a small amount of water in the stronger cups. Kids, get an adult to do this for you. They are immune to hot water. D don't, don't throw hot water at them, please. The more diluted your mixture is, the lighter the colour tone will be. Less water equals stronger tones, just as if we were using watercolours. Here are our three coffee tones. And here are our two tea colours. They are too hot to paint with now, so let's let them chill out for an hour. Maybe we can encourage them to meditate or play some nice music for them. Let's send them some good vibes too. Ask a friend to help you to multiply the vibes. And now that they are fully chillaxed, we can start painting with them. Actually, before we start painting with them, let's test out the colours to see what we're dealing with here. We have three different tones of coffee and two tea tones. We can use the lighter tones in our artwork first and then start to build up the shadows with the mid-tones and the shadows with the darkest tones. I think we'll use the two tea colours for the goat horns as they are typically a slightly different colour to the skull. Let's start painting the goat skull first using the lightest coffee tone colour. So by using the lightest colour first, we make it a lot easier to add in some mid-tones and darker tones after that. If we started with the dark tones first and then had to add in some like lighter colour and then some lighter colours on top of that, it would be pretty, pretty impossible. You need to use white pens, you need to use white paints, um, and it's just really hard to add on to darker layers first. Um, so doing this way is definitely the easiest way. In traditional media, that's probably the best way to do it, but if you're painting in digital, you can always paint lighter and it doesn't, it works way better than what you're doing traditional media. 
Um, so right now, I'm just adding some of the dark shadows to the skull just to make it look a little more realistic and a little bit more 3D as well as just the coffee looks awesome when it blends in together to the paper when it dries. It has this kind of kind of ripply effect, um, kind of like as if pixels were breaking up, I guess. That's the only thing I could really refer to it. And when you're using watercolors, you never really get that effect at all. Um, so now I'm just kind of adding some darker tones. It was a little bit difficult to add darkness Even though the coffee mixture that I was using for the dark tone was really hard And there was a lot of waiting for the watercolor paints to dry um, which turns you a little bit crazy um, But eventually it did work. So now I'm using the T artwork to to make these horns here um, so generally the goat horns are a little bit of a different color to the goat skull because they a they are made from different materials the goat skull is made from bone obviously but the goat horns are made from a different material um, which is sort of like the nails that humans grow on their hands it's kind of it's not really bone but it's a very hard solid material and that's what they grow their horns with I'm not sure why they do this, um, bone sounds pretty cool, but um, I guess maybe it grows back or it's less painful when it breaks off. Um, I'm not sure, we have to ask and interview a goat for those specific um, details about their evolution. Um, obviously we'll probably have to find an alive goat, um, probably a dead one, like I don't think skulls really talk that much, um, unless you're Hamlet. Um, <laughs> that was a horrible reference, I, I apologize for that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's a different material so that it is a slightly different color. And I found when I was painting the horns, I'm not sure if it was because of the tea colors that I used, um, but it was really hard to add depth and shadow using the tea color. So I resorted to using the coffee tones um, with the horns. It was, yeah, I'm not, I can't put my finger on why it was so difficult. Maybe I didn't wait for the colors to, or the, the water to dry enough before adding mid-tones and shadows. But yeah, it was a real struggle to do that. So it was just a matter of waiting for it to dry, adding more more coffee tones to the, to the darker lines um, over and over and over again. So it did take me longer to actually paint the horns and get that to a state which I really liked. Um, rather than the skull which was really really easy maybe maybe the skull was beginner's luck using um coffee coffee art i don't know um has anyone else experienced this i i probably not um but yeah so i started adding some splashes and some some drips i guess to the artwork by using paper and smacking the the, the paintbrush on that um just not to get it onto the skull uh, I thought this kind of cool effect would match the sketchiness and and the rough style that I was going for here. And with the line work, I was able to do this as well. I used a natural kind of kind of brush, the brush pen, which adds not perfect lines, but varying brush stroke lengths and and sizes, which makes it look like it was painted really roughly, which is definitely the effect I'm going for here especially with some of the watercolor bleeds out of the lines as well which technically if you're a fine artist maybe you don't want this but if you're going for a rough rough look like I am it's definitely adds to the aesthetic um, so the texture of the coffee that I put down on the paper was actually a little bit rough it was kind of like a sandpaper there's a bit of sediment on there obviously they're not made for watercolor so they don't blend to the paper completely flat there there's a little bit of roughness there's a little bit of coffee grain in there too with the fine liner that I'm using now which I'm doing a little bit of cross hatching right now I kind of I noticed a lot of it it was like painting on sandpaper or drawing on sandpaper so there's a bit of resistance there but it wasn't enough to stuff up my pen like some other paints can sometimes do. Um, fine liners aren't as robust as you would think. So the cross hatching really helped bring out that aesthetic of being rough and having a unique look. Uh, so I just kind of built that up to the in the shadows and left it at that. Overall, I'm really happy with the final artwork. I think it's one of my best works um, with coffee. Well, one of the only ones, but I definitely think that I'm gonna be using coffee again in the future because it was so much fun and so cheap to make. As you can see, there's a lot of leftover coffee and tea. Maybe I should drink it all. Then again, maybe I won't be able to sleep tonight. 
Anyway, let's turn this artwork into a digital print. We'll start by duplicating my scan, then we'll hide the first layer. I'm going to destroy the first layer in order to take out all the white space in our second layer. To do this, we'll use the blending options tool. I'll slide this bar to the left which will take out 95% of the color until I'm left with mostly line work. Then I'll use the wand tool to select the outside of my line work. Hide the destroyed layer and then unhide the first layer we created. Our current selection contains almost everything within our skull line work and virtually no white background space. So the only thing we need to do is press delete while we're clicked onto the first layer. All the white background space is now gone. I'll use a grey background layer to show you how clean the end result is. Pretty nice right? Let's see if we can enhance our image with a levels adjustment layer and a hue and saturation adjustment too. We don't want to go overboard with these adjustments. Just enough alteration to make the artwork pop to life instead of visually electrocute you to death. There's a little bit of a fine line there that we need to navigate. I decided not to clean up my line work in this artwork because the sketchy look adds to the aesthetic more than the vectorized line work could. Here's the final result on Redbubble products. Not bad. And now I think it's time for an art challenge. Artist challenge. Participate in this challenge with the hashtag a show about art on Instagram and Redbubble. Participants will be featured on the next episode. Your challenge for this week is to create some coffee art. You can follow the way I created my own coffee slash tea watercolor artwork or if you don't have the materials, you can draw something coffee or tea related. Maybe you could draw a coffee cup creature or you could even, you could even draw a coffee bean fighting a tea bag trying to get into a mug. The choice is up to you. And of course participants will be featured on the next episode of a show about art regardless of artistic skill level or what materials you used. Just make sure to use the hashtag a show about art on Instagram and Redbubble so I can see it. I can't wait to see your coffee art entries. Thanks for drawing with me, and goodbye for now, but not forever. Check this out, this about dreams, patterns I carved out, materials given, I could have written my heart out, and God is dark now. I guess I gotta illuminate So many people dying or in the can Seeing that tuna fake To be frank, some duke it out World's a kumite Assuming they ain't trained for this Nah, corrupt data on the blank is this Not what you think this is I'm what you can't dismiss Kiss the sky when I wake Cause it could've been my way